And Jen, are you there? Yep, I see Jen. Yep, I am. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yep. Hey, Cher, can we test your audio as well? Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Great. Kim, Annie's on too. And I, yes, I knew Annie was on before. We already we already tested. Great. Great. Okay, so folks are just coming back into the room and I'm waiting for Lisa who is also here who is going to join me at the podium. So, I just wanna wait for Lisa to get back up here and then we'll get started. And you all saw that I did change the order, right? Yes. Thank you for doing that. No Sorry, worries everyone. at all. Can someone in the, hey Dan, can you see if Lisa Stevens is out there and ask her if she's ready? Not to like put her on the spot, but. I'm not gonna share that with the folks on remotely. <laughs> and are we recording? That's fine, okay. So I think um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I know folks are still getting their cup of coffee or their cookie coming back into the room, but um, if everyone could grab their seat. Okay. So this next sec session um, is really um, a chance to give everyone an update on what's happening with the projects that have been funded under the SUNY PIF initiative or the EIPF initiative, and I'll talk about what those are, um, and really how um, significant investments are being made through these initiatives that either directly or indirectly support what we're trying to do in scaling online learning. So we thought it might be helpful just to give you a snapshot of some of those um, projects, areas, where some of that funding is going, and um, how it's going to support online learning. And Jeff, it sounds like the audio just changed, so is, is that okay? Everyone can still hear me okay? All right. And you folks remotely can hear me okay? So yes. this is this is really we're emulating what we're talking about here because um, uh, almost all of the panelists are remote. Um, you can, can you see them? They are not up there. <sighs> Let's see if we can make this happen. How about... Oh, that doesn't look good. Yeah. All right, I'm going to stop share and we're going to share again. Let's try this one more time. Yeah, I don't like how that looks. Okay, one more time. How's that? Okay, if I do that, then, then we can't see them. Okay. Okay. So I don't. This one? Oh. Yeah, but okay. Doesn't work when I'm sharing. Love technology. Love technology. Let's see what we have open here. Is this the one I want to share? when I do this, it's going to happen again. 
All right, how's that? I think that works. We're going to go with it. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> yes, I can. Yeah. So you can... So I just, I just want everybody to know that we have some folks um, joining us remotely. I will introduce them in a bit, um, but uh, this is really the um, team of folks who are facilitating these projects um, that are um, supported through the PIF and EIPF funding. So agenda, I'm going to talk a little bit about what PIF and EIPF are and um, what we're doing with that funding. Um, then we're going to have community of practice and project updates from the facilitators um, uh, who are here with me today, and then ho hopefully we'll have some time for questions and discussion. So um, I'm going to start by just uh, saying that um, with the performance improvement funding process, um, uh, which was launched in 2017, um, uh, we launched a set of communities of practice, which were really designed to drive innovation in some key areas that were identified by multiple campuses as things campuses felt like they needed help with in order to achieve the goals that they had set out in their performance improvement plans. So you all remember the performance improvement plans of several years ago. Um, and so campuses were able to kind of send in proposals for where they would like funding to help with things that they um, still needed to make progress on in those plans. We looked at all of those proposals and identified kind of areas where multiple campuses had requested funding to do similar or the same things and grouped them into these nine areas that you see on the screen, um, which represent the communities of practices that were funded. And, and when I say the communities of practices that were funded, we really took a very different approach in the, in the PIF funding process, which was instead of saying, you know, campus X, you requested, you know, um, you know, uh, um, $100,000 to do this project. We said, campus, you know, X, Y, Z, you three requested to um, funding to do something similar. We're going to fund you as a group to work together on uh, um, uh, putting forth some, um, some, some solutions that will help SUNY move the dial in that regard. So whether it was in recruitment or student success, or diversity, equity, and inclusion, right? We, we had campuses who either proposed something individually and we grouped them together. In some cases, we actually had campuses come forward and say, we want to lead an effort and coordinate with a team of campuses to work on something together. So there's a combination of those things in this. And these are the nine communities of practice of practice that were funded in 2017 with funding that went from um, 2018 and 2019 and some of that is spilling over into 2020. Um, I want to come down to the note at the bottom which is the EIPF which is the expand, um, Expanded Investment um, Performance Fund um, and that actually is a funding cycle that pre um, that came before PIF so um, with funds from the actually 2015-2016 um, academic year. Uh, and so we took, there were several projects that were funded from anywhere from one to five years in that funding cycle. Um, and we have now folded all of those projects into one of these nine communities of practice. Um, so that now we're, we're looking at all the investment fund projects together. So um, uh, um, some of those projects were things like the first cohort of early alerts. Well, we already had a cohort of early alerts, so we combined those together. The Star New York Tutoring Consortium was in there, so we folded that into the student success community of practice. So um, there, were, there were a list of, of initiatives funded in 2015-16. We now have folded them all into these communities of practice. Okay. Um, so highlighted in yellow are the communities of practice where there are um, direct investments being made um, in online learning or to support online learning or where the things that they're doing can have a positive impact on online learning. So um, while you don't see online learning up there explicitly, um, and some people did ask about that, um, you know, we really see initiatives in multiple areas that are supporting online learning. And that's really what we wanted to give you an update on here today. So, um, if we look at those communities of practice again, um, in the student success area, I've had the pleasure of co-facilitating that community of practice with Jennifer Miller, um, who is the executive director for SUNY's Student Success Center. Um, and so um, Jen is going to talk a little bit about um, three project areas which um, are having an impact and support online learning. Um, Sherry Perillo, who is 
uh, from the SUNY Enrollment Services um, uh, um, area at SUNY Sysadmin. She's going to talk about two projects there that are supporting recruitment that will be helpful to online learning, some of one you've heard about a little bit today. Um, new models for enhancing enrollment retention and completion. Lisa Stevens and I have been co-facilitating that. So Lisa's going to talk about two areas in that um, community of practice around um, scaling online learning and micro-credentialing. And then um, Annie Wong, who's here from the SUNY Project Management Office, um, is going to give us an update on two areas, um, critical workforce needs and clean energy, which really are about um, academic programs and what's happening in those, um, and talk about both new programs and program revisions. So, um, so that's what we're going to hear about. Um, and uh, without further ado, I'm going to just go right into those updates so that you can all um, hear them. And uh, the first one who's going to go is Jen. So I'm going to try and see if we can um, have just one window up here. I think we can. So Jen, um, why don't you um, go ahead? Great. Thanks, Kim. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can actually hear you great. And everybody can see you as well, just great. so you know. Wonderful. Hello, everyone. Um, greetings from Albany. Sorry um, I couldn't be there in person with you today, but I know you all are very much in favor of online learning, so um, we are here um, online today. Um, so thank you, Kim. Um, Kim and I, as she mentioned, are co-facilitating um, the uh, Student Success Center Communities of Practice. And um, the one thing that we wanted to share really quickly before we go into the three project areas is that this is one of the largest uh, communities of practice within the um, performance improvement um, area. Uh, we have 65 projects, 39 of which are 2016-17 um, PIF projects or performance improvement fund projects, and 26 of which are the 2015-16 EIPF projects that Kim mentioned. So we have a, a fairly um, significant group of projects, some of which are cohort-based, where there's a lead campus, and some of which are a collection of projects that seemed to work well together as a community of practice subgroup area. So just want to hit um, really quickly the goals, and then I'll go through the three areas. Um, there are some experts, I'm sure, in the room on the three areas, so um, I will also let Kim um, weigh in on a couple of those and her colleagues because uh, they are closer to the projects than I. So in general, um, what we set out to do for goals for the student success area is that we wanted to be recognized as a national leader in implementing scalable high-impact student success support models um, just to ensure our students were succeeding in a variety of ways. Student success has a broad um, is a broad term that is used in a lot of different ways, and it's evidenced by the 13 specific subcommittees or groups that um, comprise the 65 projects I mentioned. So we, we really felt that if we um, worked together um, through a broad community of practice and then subcommittees um, within that network, we could grow um, some of the activities on individual campuses and then also learn from national models um, to support our campuses within the community of practice. We also were looking specifically at um, reducing the average time to degree across the system um, and increasing the number of completions for our students. Um, this is a big area of focus in student success right now, and a lot of reforms are targeted in these areas. A lot of individual projects within the community of practice um, address this um, particular goal. And then we wanted to have our campuses um, looking at leading platforms and technologies, and that's really, I think, appropriate for the three areas we're going to talk about briefly, um, to look at core infrastructure needs um, to support students as they um, move through our colleges and um, within the system. So there's an important need for technology infrastructure and support in those areas. So I think overall, we've, those are the particular goals we were interested in. Um, a couple of the key overview um, the, deliverables after this first year is that we held um, a student success summit last October and brought together almost 250 people from across the system and outside to discuss and um, look at the different um, activities that were supporting student success within the system. And um, it was very well attended, and I think there was a real need for this kind of interaction across campuses, and we were really excited um, to have that kind of um, interest in these areas. And it was beyond the actual um, student success community of practice. So really quickly, we'll get into there. As I mentioned, there are 13 sub, um, what we call committees. Um, the one in particular that is near and dear to Kim's heart, and I think also Michelle Fort and Kristen Muller, if they're there, is the Early Alerts Project. And this, as Kim mentioned earlier, has been ongoing. 
Um, it's looking at case management to support student success, um, particularly uh, how to help students in a variety of areas, um, getting information to, um, to, to the people who need to be involved, whether it's faculty or student um, support service folks, to help early intervention for students who may be struggling and also to encourage students to keep moving forward through their path. Um, as you can see from the slide, there's a, a contract in place. There's 32 campuses involved that have grown into the, this is, I think, the third cohort. Um, it's, there's an integration into campus systems. There's a, um, a structure in place that helps support professional development through mentor campus teams, um, open SUNY supports, and obviously Hopkins has been very instrumental in working in partnerships. I know that this group led by Michelle and Kristen um, with the campus mentors meet, I think, once a month. Um, to support one another and to work through the opportunities and some challenges that um, come from implementing um, an early alert system within a campus environment. So, Kim, I'm going to pause and see if you have anything further to add there because I know that you're, this is a near and dear uh, project to you. Yeah, I just want to ask anyone who's involved with that on um, the Early Alerts Project to raise your hand, any campuses that are involved in that, just so that folks around the room can see who all is here and who you can reach out to um, uh, mentors and new campuses as well um, if you have questions about this and want to know more. Okay, that's it. Great. So then the next area of focus um, in terms of a subgroup is our course scheduling analytics or what um, is been termed the Ad Astra pro project for um, Platinum Analytics. This is the second phase of this project. The first phase um, took place in 2015, uh, I'm sorry, 2015-16. Um, and I think that there were, it was enough interest from campuses to, um, to create a new cohort of campuses. I know they're a little bit earlier um, in their uh, work in this, um, this particular area, but they're looking at ma uh, maximizing and optimizing a master course schedule for um, colleges and really helping look at um, course needs, and in particular online course needs as the, the, the college reviews what, what the schedule looks like and how there's efficiencies in that schedule. Um, the contracts right now um, are being led by, uh, or the, the campus-based um, cohorts are being led by Fredonia and Mo Monroe Community College, and there's a definite integration with other existing um, uh, technology platforms, and um, I know Fredonia and Mon Monroe have been providing support for this group. I do believe that you know some of the earlier campuses, campuses that were also involved in the 2015-16 project have been involved. So I know that this is continuing to evolve um, as uh, the year um, uh, comes to an end, and then they embark on their second year in this area. So, um, Kim, I don't know if Lisa or Andrew are in the room, but if there's anything else you wanted to add to this particular um, uh, subcommittee. They're not, and, and um, um, although um, we certainly have some folks from Monroe here, and um, is, is anybody from Fredonia? I haven't seen Lisa Malahusky yet. Um, so um, this, this project is not specifically about online. This is about thinking about the whole campus master schedule. But when you think about um, some of the conversations we've been having in terms of making sure that students get the courses they need and understanding where you have low enrolled courses or bottleneck courses, that's really what this project is all about, helping you identify where those pain points are in your master schedule and helping to inform how you might schedule courses going forward. So if you're not involved in this and you have some of those issues on your campus, this. Um, uh, you may want to think about this or, or you know, um, if you want to come um, ask me um, or Jen or reach out to Lisa or Andrea to find out if your campus is involved, um, I would encourage you to do that. There's another um, uh, subcommittee in supportive scheduling, Kim, and in guided pathways that, um, that are also part of the community of practice that have some tangible overlaps with some of what they're doing in the, the master course scheduling. So we're also trying to link our community of practice um, uh, subgroup projects together. So we've had a lot of discussion on that. So if, if folks have ideas and other things they're aware of, we're always um, interested in making those connections. And um, actually for this particular subgroup, we'll talk a little bit about the importance of workplace because um, we have used for the student success um, uh, group um, workplace pretty effectively for most of our um, overarching um, communication for the community of practice, but also some of our subcommittees are using it really effectively to keep communication. One is the online enhancement subcommittee led by Molly Mott at Canton, and she's done an amazing job of really keeping her group together. And really, she's focused on um, the student services um, in the online space specifically and looking at the redesign of those services and the addition of those services. Um, she, uh, I think, is of particular interest is communication and looking at concierge models for students and then engagement with the campus. 
um, um, the virtual engagement. I know that she's looked at a lot of different um, pieces and parts, and, and the folks involved in that are really kind of trying to be very innovative on how to link students to the campus um, that may not get there physically and, and having that online presence. Um, they have been, as I said, very um, active in workplace and have really started to share a lot of ideas. I think they've made some um, conference um, and some meeting um, uh, presentations as well. So they've been very active and I think um, have really sort of um, embraced the idea of developing a, a sub-community of practice within the larger community of practice. Kim, would there be anything else you would add on this area? I know that you and Molly have been very closely linked in some of this work. Yep, and Molly is here. Um, you know, we recognized oh, Hi, her earlier. Um, uh, within Where is she? She um, should raise okay. her hand so folks can ask her directly. Absolutely, oh, yeah. Is. Yeah, we recognized her <laughs> earlier work, with an Effective Practice Award um, and the work that Canton is doing. So, um, And I know there are other campuses here involved in that project. Could you raise your hand if your campus is involved in that project? They're here. They're not raising their hands, but they're here. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, So that's good. Great. Kim, I'm just going to have to sign off in a few minutes. Yep. I know you can help field, help me field some questions. I really appreciate the yep. opportunity to be with you briefly virtually today. Um, again, if you have questions, um, Kim can get you in touch with me. I am jennifer.miller at SUNY.edu if you want to chat about things or want to be more engaged in the community of practice if you have a project. And I, I, again, thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit about a, a few of our subcommittees that are related to the work you all are doing. So um, we look forward to more um, interactions and the exciting opportunities when we're working together in the, in the community of practice model. Thanks, Jen. Thanks. Thank you so much. Have a great uh, rest of your conference, everyone. Thanks, Jen. Take care. Um, so next, we're actually going to go to student recruitment. And Sherry, I think you have your own slides, right? Right, I do. So I'm going to stop sharing. Should I try and, and share them? <laughs> yep, yes, you can do it. Look at her with her SUNY I, swag in the background. Uh, okay, let's see this window. Do you see something? Yes. All right, oops, it moved to my other window. Do you see the right thing? Uh, so you're not in presentation mode, but we see the slides. Okay, let me see if I can drag it over to, I'm sorry, I'm on a double screen. Hmm. Okay, sorry. That's okay, you can, that, that actually, can folks read that? Can you see that? That's actually fine if you wanna just go from there, Cher. Okay, I was trying to see if I could even make the window better, but I can't. So if, you'll, if you don't mind this, I'll go through this like this. All right, hi, welcome. I'm going to go ahead and give you some updates with two student recruitment um, PIP initiatives. Um, there are a few more others that are involved, but we're going to focus on two today. One is the online recruitment solution that I'm guessing most of you are already familiar with. Um, this is a project where Wiley is providing um, a, a web presence for Open SUNY programs. So they are hosting the program navigator for Open SUNY. It was a contract that was signed in February of last year. So we're one year into a three-year contract for this project. The initiative covers all campuses who offer online programs. And there are some additional optional services that are available to Open SUNY Plus campuses. Um, we, through this in, uh, interface, we collect leads for online programs. They are loaded into System Administration's CRM. And then they're made available for campuses to download through Campus Connect. The contract includes a potential for integration with individual campus CRMs is, um, uh, under that umbrella. And there are other optional services available to, uh, to campuses through the contract. So these are things like marketing, market research, um, uh, some messaging development, that type of thing. This uh, initiative is supported by my office and in conjunction with Open SUNY. You can see the contacts for both of our offices there. I'm going to go ahead and go to the next slide and give you some updates of what has been happening over this past year. So uh, things that have happened recently is that we have recently added an indicator for online degree completion programs. So as you may know, before it was not as visible to students which programs were degree completion programs. Now you'll see a notation after those program titles that says transfer, 
transfers only. We've also standardized credit notations for degree completion programs, so it no longer looks like you could complete a bachelor's degree in 64 credits total. <laughs> so that went into effect just recently. We've also added the phone number to the request for information form, so now students are prompted to provide a phone number. Many of them do. That data is being collected now, and it, we will be adjusting your file layout so that we can distribute phone number to you uh, no later than, I believe, the end of this month. We are also going to be launching a program editor. We anticipate that this will be available by the end of April. A program editor will allow campus staff, instead of submitting a ticket to Open SUNY every time you have a new program or a change to a program, you will be able to access a program editor, make those edits yourself, system administration will um, publish your changes and um, it should be a lot easier for you to get that done. So we hope that will be done by April. We're going to be beta testing this, um, I think in the next couple weeks with seven campuses in our advisory group. You may have also been aware that advanced certificates and certificate programs were grouped together in one category. And this was, of course, creating a lot of confusion for students so those will actually be separated into two separate categories. Again, we expect that to happen by the end of April. As mentioned in the last slide, there are optional services that are currently being rolled out to campuses today. So I think there are seven campuses today who are taking advantage of some of those marketing services. And there are other campuses who have, I believe, raised their hand. Next for this project, we um, will be moving forward with integration with system and administration CRM, and I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Just to give you a preview of what that program editor might look like, um, you would go to a website, you'd log into the editor, and then you would uh, be able to click the new program button and enter all the data yourself. You could also look up an existing program and make edits, and then again, once you are done, someone at system administration would publish those changes for you. So that's coming soon. On to the CRM performance improvement initiative. Um, as you may know, we um, issued an RFP for a CRM, a, a constituent relationship management system for enrollment uh, over a year ago, and we awarded the contract to Technolutions for their product, which is called Slate. That contract was signed in July of last year. It's a three-year contract with a with an option to renew for two additional years. We currently have um, about 27 campuses participating under the U-wide contract, and then another seven campuses participating on their, under their own contracts with Slate. And that list changes almost daily. In fact, someone emailed me today and said their participating institution agreement is on its way. So there's been a really great adoption by campuses for this project. The CRM will give us more visibility into what happens to leads and the ability to track them through the recruitment funnel. So that is from the you know, prospective student stage all the way through applicant stage and then to enrolled student stage. And if you have any questions about this uh, project, I'd be happy to answer them and you see my email address here. So this is again uh, the product that um, we will be working with. Here you see the campuses that are participating today, and as I said, I have one more addition. And here are the campuses were already existing customers of Slate before we began this project. So you can see there is a lot of really great adoption. There were a couple goals for this project. One is that campuses would have access to really great recruitment technology. So using Slate, you can blast out an email to a large group of students, you can host a form on your website um, that collects information from the students. You can manage travel and events. Um, you can even put up an application for admission and manage that through Slate. Um, and these other pieces that you see here. And so we feel like, yes, that goal has been achieved for the 30 plus campuses that are now on this platform. And um, these tools, I work with them on a daily basis. I think they're really exceptional. So they're going to raise the bar on our ability to recruit online as students for online programs. The second goal of this initiative 
was to um, actually are you seeing what screen are you seeing right now Kim? updates okay seems like I went back to the beginning here okay the other goal I hope that you're seeing a, a slide that says goal achieved yes the other goal for this is to be able to standardize some of the data collection. So you're probably familiar with people from the Open SUNY team or maybe people from the Application Services Center reaching out to you and asking you for data on kind of this ad hoc basis, like, oh, next month we're going to need decision data or uh, next you know, week we're going to need to know which of these students have applied to your campus. And we know that's a big lift for you, and it's also a big lift on the system administration side to standardize all the information that comes in. So what's great about this product is we were able to create a kind of SUNY master database at the outset of the initiative. And then every time a campus joins under the university-wide contract, we're able to clone that master database to each of you. So that allows us to incorporate some standardization. So it is already pre-populated with some fields with standard values that we all use, and some, also some queries with some standard specifications. So that's going to make the um, process easier for you and for us to share data back and forth. So we feel like uh, we've got a good handle or a good start on that as well. Next up for this project, um, so you know today that when a student submits a request for information through the Open SUNY website, that request goes into the system administration CRM. Uh, we do some uh, high level contact and then we also make that lead available to you through Campus Connect. So someone on your campus is then logging into Campus Connect and downloading those leads. Next, for campuses who are participating in this late project, instead of being required to go to Campus Connect and pull down those leads, we'll actually be pushing the leads to you and putting them on the campus's SFTP server and a job can run automatically overnight and load them into the campus instance of Slate. So that should really improve speed to uh, contact and also decrease, again, some of that manual labor that's happening today. So those are kind of some really quick updates about these projects. Um, I don't know, Kim, did you want to add anything at this point? Um. I guess the only thing I would add um, just very quickly is um, particularly this um, the CRM project, uh, you know, you saw the list of campuses that were up there. If, that's, if this is being implemented on your campus and you have any role at all or any interest in growing online students, um, please connect with, with that implementation on your campus. Um, and if you're not sure who's leading that, you can reach out to Sherry and she can let you know that. Um, you know, I think this is really going to be um, significant for um, our ability as we start doing some investments in um, promotion of online programs to be able to know the effectiveness of those promotion, um, promotional efforts. So um, just want you all to be aware so that you can connect with the right folks on your campus. Okay. Thanks, oh. Sherry. Can you stop, stop sharing? There. Thank you. Um, you. And you're going to stick around for questions, right? Sorry? You're going to stick around for questions at the end? Yes. Okay, yes. great, great. So next I'm going to turn over to Lisa Stevens, um, who is going to talk about um, the new models community of practice. <laughs> Let's see if I can bring up the right version of this. I think we're good. And... There you go. Thanks, Kim. Um, I don't know how often or the opportunity I'm going to have to have a microphone, so I often think of PIF and EPIF as IITG on steroids. How many of you have signed up to be IITG reviewers? Thank you. <laughs> Chris, yeah, Chris, Chris and I literally just finished uh, all the reviewer assignments about uh, half an hour ago. So Kim asked me to speak a little bit about the um, new models group, and in particular, the scaling online learning and micro-credentials. So the 
primary purpose to this group is to look at how we can scale up online learning, how we can have a bigger impact by providing more access to classes across the system and outside of the system. We have some good statistics in terms of how many students actually seek their education from other providers because we don't have a unified or effective approach with a lot of our online programs being, being uh, marketed and provided at scale. Um, so the Scaling Online group in particular is led by Brandon, <coughs> where are you, Brandon Murphy? <laughs> And Chuck Spugus, where's Chuck? He's over, and uh, Larry Dugan. So I, Larry's here somewhere. Yeah. Right. So, you know, unfortunately, we can no longer call it the Chuck and Larry show. Uh, Chuck has the temerity to up and retire, so we, we tip our hat to you, Chuck. We're going we're gonna to miss you on this project, and we know Brandon's going to do a great job, and we look forward to still being able to lean on you here and there. So if anyone has any questions in general about scaling up online, there's your two guys. Uh, Micro-credentialing, I don't even feel like I should be talking about that. Jill is here. Jill is the absolute master of micro-credentialing. She's outside. <laughs> so she's led the FACT2 group. She's currently leading uh, the broader effort on micro-credentials. And uh, I want to mention that there is a workshop coming up in a couple of Fridays that you might be interested in attending. It's, I believe, going to be a very holistic view and the how, what, where of micro-credentials. It'll be available in, in Albany. And uh, Cindy Proctor is leading that workshop. I think a number of you know Cindy. So she's been uh, kind of the, the behind the machine. Um, and in particular, micro-credentials offer an opportunity to stack smaller elements of program, and hopefully we can figure out how to be more effective in taking small units of credit-bearing and non-credit-bearing content and help people uh, with their educational objectives and goals. I did want to spend just a minute and talk about a few, I can't cover all of them, but a few success stories would be uh, starting at my own campus, many of you know Christine Kroll. She's launched the Learning Academies. She's rolling out a very large program to our faculty as part of a broader faculty development around learning design. And uh, Amy Moore is here. She can <laughs> and she has been helping Christine to create MOOCs. And that will be available, openly available to all of you as soon as it's complete. Um, Let's see, SUNY Poly has a terrific joint, joint center for creativity, design, and venturing. And they are coupling together humanities and business management. So what a, what a creative solution that is indeed. And uh, there's also a good element of ethics in there. Morrisville, I don't know if Jason Zeebach is here today, but uh, he's been putting together a um, Four hybrid manufacturing courses, continuing education courses, have been put together. They're being blended with subject matter expert modules. Um, Chuck and Brandon have been leading the ESF Open Academy, so they've got some advanced certificates coming online with uh, um, radiation curing. And you guys are also partnering with uh, Herkimer and Genesee. Am I leaving anything out that you want to give a shout to? Oh, that's right, the new upper division bachelor's degree. How could I leave that out? Thank you, Chuck. So if you have questions about that, by all means, tap them while you can. There. Um, just a, a couple of other things. Chris Price is also leading the curricular uh, innovation and faculty development group. And there is some synergy there, some, some touch points with online learning, but nothing directly correlated to about degrees at scale. So. You know, what do we, by the way, mean degrees at scale? I don't think we have a particular number in mind yet, do we? More than 20. More than 20. More than 20. You're going to hear a little more about that tomorrow, I think. Plattsburgh uh, has 142 online accounting majors with a 92% retention rate. They've received some good recognition for that. 
So in general, the new models, we have six EPIF awards from 15, 16, and then for 16, 17, 17, 18, there's 23 projects. We have a total of 29. Um, in addition to the micro-credentialing and scaling online, Mark was in the back of the room a minute ago, so we have also brought in under that umbrella the OER development, the IITG initiative, which Chris is also the co-program manager with now. I think that's it. I think those are all my scribbled notes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Happy to respond to any questions that you might have. Thanks, Lisa. Um, uh, one more area um, to hear from. Actually, it's two areas combined, and Annie is going to talk about those from um, uh, the project management office. So, Annie, I'm going to turn it over to you. And, um, Thank you. Everyone can see you as well, just to let you know you're a, a little video window down in the uh, lower left. Okay, great. Thanks, Kim. So the critical workforce needs and curriculum development community of practice is also known as the high needs community of practice, um, which is probably you're more, probably more familiar with that uh, naming convention. Um, generally speaking, a high needs um, area is where there is a limited number of um, recent graduates uh, for the number of job openings and where there's a projection to have high job growth. So projects that have been funded in the high needs areas include healthcare, IT, education, agriculture, and clean energy. And for the purposes of the PIF, clean energy is its own community of practice. So I'll be talking uh, briefly about the two. So the overall goals of both of these communities of practice are to meet the, curricula, uh, the, cr the critical and emerging workforce needs of New York State through curriculum development and programs uh, for SUNY to be nationally competitive and to drive economic development in the state. Uh, currently, the PIF is supporting 12 projects in high needs and in clean energy that are, um, you know, targeting online programs and courses. Um, there are eight projects in high needs, developing new programs and revising current programs. So unlike the other um, communities of practice that you've already heard about, um, high needs and clean energy are specifically more geared towards academic programs at the campus level, um, and, and they're individualized. Um, so in high needs, there are four uh, projects in healthcare and four in education, financial services, and IT. So related to the new online programs, um, Empire State College launched their Bachelor of Science and Allied Health program in January of 2018. The program targets audi uh, graduates of associate's degrees and diplomas in allied health to work towards a BS. And the, and the entire program is offered online. Um, so to just to name a few, allied health professionals are EMTs, paramedics, dental hygienists, medical assistance, and physical therapy assistance. Um, there are 32 students that were accepted into the first cohort, which is very exciting, and then there are already 21 applications pending for the second cohort. Oswego offers a master in biomedical and health informatics where the students are exposed to experiential learning in the clinic. The program expands the campus's capacity to perform data analytics and to integrate precision cancer care into the medical curricula. And online enrollments have been stronger than initially um, anticipated. So there are 34 um, in the first cohort and 32 in the second cohort, which is very exciting as well. The genetic counseling program is unique at the University of Buffalo because it's developing a signature transdisciplinary program involving nine units across the campus, which you can imagine took extensive time to get buy-in and support um, from those units. And so far, one core course will be developed uh, for online access. In fall 2018, Binghamton launched the nation's only online advanced certificate program in P-12 community schools, which includes curriculum, support for content experts, technical assistance, and an online course developer. Um, and recently, Binghamton was selected by the New York State Education Department as one of the three community school technical assistance centers in the state. And so this signifies to us that it, there's a strong commitment by New York State of community schools and also that there's this emerging role of SUNY through Binghamton as a leader of professional preparation of community schools. And then um, the last new program is um, done by Old Westbury, who, um, which created an online 30-credit Masters of Science in Accounting. 
and they're working on increasing their online offerings from two courses from 2017 to five courses um, upcoming to be offered uh, in the fall of 2019. And then there are three high needs projects that are working on program enhancements. Uh, Plattsburgh is expanding their registered nurse to bachelor's of science completion program through program infrastructure and marketing. And by making this program online, their reach can be casted wider to other states like Vermont and those participating in the National Council for State Authorized Reciprocity Agreement. Canton is revising the bachelor's in technology degree in industrial technology management by changing the modality of instruction to online. Um, they are developing a four-course online sequence in a micro-credential in logistics. And the PIF is supporting Canton's uh, campus-wide efforts in online programs, which make up 24% of Canton's enrollment. At the University of Albany, the investment fund is supporting marketing and communications, capacity building, staffing needed for enrollment growth in the School of Education online technology program. They're revising the certificate in computing education to make sure it aligns with the new regulations issued by NYSED and that the program will be successful at preparing educators to become computer science teachers. So we'll go to the next slide, and this is uh, four projects um, that supported in the, in the clean energy community of practice, which was kicked off in July of last year. Um, ERI is developing an online continuing education unit for industry employees responsible for the advancement of clean energy workforce. So like um, architects, engineers, building and code inspectors that work for county um, and community town boards, planning boards, and zoning boards of appeals. They're converting classroom courses in solar uh, photovoltaics, which is mandated for building and code inspectors to the online format. Maritime has two uh, funded projects where they will be developing a combination of in-class and online courses that align with offshore wind farms and liquid natural gas leading to certificates and degrees. And then lastly, uh, SUNY Polytechnic is partnering with ESF and SUNY Oneonta to offer new experiential learning opportunities for students to learn lead principles and certify new and existing green buildings on campus. Oneonta has plans to hire an instructor this summer to develop online programs. Um, I'm sure there are um, representatives from these campuses that are working on these uh, projects, so please chime in. Um, if you if you wish um, and I just want to thank everybody for giving me the opportunity to share just a brief update on these projects thanks Annie um, I know there are some folks in the room from the campuses that were mentioned um, so um, anybody want to want to add anything to what Annie shared nobody's jumping up Annie okay <laughs> but we're we're um, you know I think a pretty um, uh, um, uh, collegial group here so I know if folks have questions they'll reach out so so I know um, we're getting close to time but we do have probably about seven or eight minutes for um, questions for um, Annie or Sherry or Lisa um, or I can um, help respond to questions on the student success side um, does anybody have any questions I'm going to just make a couple of comments and then I'll have a question that I'll throw out to the group. Um, and uh, one of the comments is that all of these communities of practice, every community of practice, has a group in, um, in Workplace, which is um, uh, you know, SUNY's collaboration platform. So um, if you are interested in understanding what's happening with the groups, um, you can find um, some information in Workplace. You can reach out to the community of practice yeah. facilitators. Um, um, you know, as someone who's been involved in uh, this process from literally the beginning of deciding how it is we're going to decide what to fund and how are we going to structure the, um, uh, you know, um, engagement with the campuses and bringing them together, um, I have to say um, we started out, it was a little bumpy um, uh, in terms of how it was all working, but the team of facilitators um, who are a combination of folks at sysadmin and some folks on the campuses, I think have really um, worked hard to 
um, uh, think about uh, what makes sense, what's reasonable and manageable, and, and recognize that these are investments that SUNY is making, um, and we have to be able to understand um, what the impact of those investments has been so that we can, you know, part of what we're trying to think about is what can we do that will scale that is that can be replicated across the system that will really help us move the dial, right? So while um, I think we're all interested in helping every individual campus, what can we do that would have, you know, more significant impact across the system? and. You know, if I just point to a couple of the projects, like the CRM project, for example, we received multiple individual campus requests to fund that campus to purchase and implement a CRM, and we could have done that. Um, I guarantee you we wouldn't have gotten to 32 campuses or 37 campuses, based on what Sherry was saying. We wouldn't have gotten to that many campuses because we couldn't have funded all of them individually, um, and they would have all done it on their own, and so we would have... Um, had that um, uh, duplication of effort um, and challenge in terms of each campus trying to figure it out. By doing the community of practice and providing the support from Sherry's team, um, we've really been able to take a lot of the heavy lift for the campuses in terms of some of the upfront work with the procurement and the contracting and the um, uh, you know, initial interactions and to engage the campuses um, in the piece that really needs their effort um, and to see some of the um, uh, now what we can see is not just visibility campus by campus by campus but visibility of that recruitment funnel um, across the system. So that's a good, I think a really good example of um, taking the approach that we've taken and the impact that we can have. Um, and I feel like we're still on the early end of seeing what the impact of some of these projects are. Um, I really think it's going to be multiple years down the road, um, particularly where we're developing new programs, where we're developing new micro-credentials, where we are doing academic reforms in the student success area, um, you know, until we really see the, the, the impact. But I think um, this approach has some promise to it. And I think our latest feedback from the campuses, so the campuses are all required to report at the end of each calendar year on um, their progress towards deliverables and outcomes of the projects in order to get their next year funding. Um, and, uh, and campuses are making progress, they are meeting their deliverables, and they are engaging in the community of practice to help them with that. Um, so, so there's still, I think, work we can do to improve how that is all working. But um, I think uh, if we look at where we started to where we are now, I think um, it's actually been a um, uh, really positive um, experience. So. Um, last call for any questions from the group. Um, we have about, about three minutes, so I'll um, just ask um, Annie and Sherry and Lisa maybe in one minute um, to say, like, what's the, um, uh, you know, thing that you um, are most excited about in terms of working with your community of practice? And um, Annie, since you're on screen, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, yeah, it's been uh, sort of a learning experience for us to um, find connections or find ways that um, these individual projects can connect with each other. So what I what I'm really excited about for this year is um, being able to offer um, to these members. Um, uh, sort of common themes that they've addressed as challenges um, and things that they can actually share out as far as successes that they've been able to accomplish from their project from their projects to share with others. So we'll be um, putting together a, a webinar series that we'll be inviting um, the other communities of practice to. Um, so because there might be you know common challenges across the board. That's really great. Thanks, Annie. Sherry. Yeah, I am excited about these projects on so many levels. It's hard to just pick one, Kim, but if you're going to ask me to pick one, I think I'm really excited about the potential to improve customer service to students. What we can see now, and, and at System Administration, we just kind of launched our instance of Slate really just two or three weeks ago. Um, you can see the demand there and the students who are reaching out and saying, yes, I would like to study online at SUNY. I just need answers to these three or four questions. And that, I think the ability to see how we can help students at that level is just uh, amazing. And the ability to turn questions around faster and to get people the assistance they want. I think um, this project from that aspect is, is just phenomenal. I, it's, it's you know, it's system administration, you can uh, 
chime in on this. We don't we don't have students here, and we so sometimes at system administration we don't have that connect line to um, our audience. And with the CRM, we do, and it's just really exciting to be able to to provide that level of customer service going forward in the future. Thank you. Yeah. It's funny that Sherry says that because I was going to suggest that I have a nephew who just started at Oswego after going to um, a community college for a time and it keeps it real for me and I get really excited. I travel around the country and I hear of exciting different initiatives that different campuses and different systems are engaged in and we're right in there with them. And sometimes it's easy for me to get, you know, head down at the campus level and I work in the School of Engineering and it can get very, very intense and narrow. I love being able to see the process and the, the, um, uh, the good works that are going on throughout the system in service of people like my nephew mm -hmm. and your sons and daughters and your grandchildren. <laughs> you know, it's, it's very cool. Awesome. So thank you. Thank you. And I'll just add on the student success side, one of the most exciting things that I think Jen and I have seen is how the different um, projects within the student success community of practice are connecting with each other, right? So we have, um, you know, initiatives on the guided pathways and developmental English and first year experience and um, orientation and advising and early alerts and the course scheduling analytics and they actually all are interrelated and again with this approach that we've taken uh, people are coming together they're talking about the work that they're doing in one area and how it can support and strengthen the impact of work in another area that has been like really uh, exciting and I think campuses are seeing that as well so um, with that we'll end um, and I just want to say um, thank you to all the panels thanks for everyone for coming in virtually um, and uh, um, if you have questions um, feel free to follow up with us later thank you Thank you. Bye-bye.